Hey guys, my name is Anna, and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the aliquot method and how to use it to measure small samples. After this video, I hope that you'll be able to understand in what given situations or scenarios to use the aliquot method, describe the steps to using the aliquot method, and perform the method with various problems. So to begin, what is aliquot? It's a fraction or part that is evenly divided into some whole quantity. The image on the right is a pretty good example on how to explain aliquot. If you have a pitcher of orange juice and you evenly divide it between as many cups as you need, the cups can resemble the aliquot of the whole pitcher of orange juice. So we use this method when accuracy is needed with a small amount of drug that is just too difficult to measure with instruments available, whether it's a scale or a graduated cylinder. Steps to using the aliquot method. Step one, you want to find the minimum weighable quantity and you're going to do this by calculating the smallest sample of the whole quantity that can be weighed with the needed accuracy using a scale or a cylinder. Step two, you want to select the multiple of the desired quantity. Step three, you want to dilute the multiple with a diluent. And step four, you want to measure the aliquot portion that contains the desired quantity. We're going to go through each step individually using an example. So step one, you want to find the minimum weighable quantity. You can do this using this equation. It is the sensitivity requirement in milligrams divided by the minimum weighable quantity in milligrams equals the percent error over 100. In an example I'll be using, the scale has a sensitivity requirement of 5 milligrams and the minimum, max, sorry, the maximum error that you can have is 5%. So if you plug those numbers into the equation using x as the minimum weighable quantity, you will find that x equals 100 milligrams. So step two, select the multiple of the desired quantity. Continuing with my example, let's say we need two milligrams of drug weighed out, but the minimum amount weighed by this scale is 100 milligrams, as we had found before. So you can use any multiple that makes two milligrams 100 milligrams or more. We need to turn two milligrams into something that this scale is able to weigh. So we can use multiples of 50 or more. In my example, I'm going to go ahead and use the multiple of 50 just to reduce waste and weigh out two milligrams times 50 equals 100 milligrams of drug. Step three, we want to dilute the multiple with a diluent. To do so, we need to find out how much diluent is needed using the minimum weighable quantity and the multiple. Continuing with my example, we know that the minimum weighable quantity is 100 milligrams for this scale. 100 milligrams times 50 equals 5,000 milligrams of mixture needed. So the 5,000 milligrams is the total amount, and we found that using the minimum weighable quantity times the multiple. So 5,000 milligrams minus the 100 milligrams of drug we already weighed out will give you how much diluent you need. In this case, 4,900 milligrams of diluent. You add your 100 milligrams of drug to 4,900 milligrams of diluent to get your total. Step four, we want to weigh the aliquot portion. We do so by dividing the total mixture by the multiple used. So in our example, we had 5,000 milligrams total mixture now. If we divide the 5,000 milligrams by 50, which was our original multiple, we'll get aliquots of 100 milligrams. Each aliquot will contain exactly 2 milligrams of the active drug. And that's how you would use these steps to measure out a very small amount of drug that maybe your scale isn't able to weigh out. So let's go ahead and try to use these steps with another example. The example reads, explain how to weigh 30 milligrams of codeine with an error not greater than 5% using lactose as a diluent. The balance has a sensitivity requirement of 6 milligrams, and you only have 1 gram of lactose left in stock. So to begin, we want to find the minimum weighable quantity using the equation 
used in step one. So we're given a sensitivity requirement of six milligrams. And we're going to put that over X because that's the quantity we're looking for. We're going to set it equal to our percent error, which is five over 100. If you cross multiply, you'll get that X equals 120 milligrams. So that is our minimum weighable quantity. Now we need to figure out how to get 30 milligrams of codeine to at least 120 milligrams. In this case, I want to do I want to use as little codeine as needed to have less waste. So I'm just going to go ahead and divide the 120 by 30 and see if I get a whole multiple. In this situation I do, I get a multiple of four. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with that multiple. So now we know that codeine, we're going to go ahead and use 30 times our multiple and get 120 milligrams of codeine. Continuing on, our total we had learned is just our minimum weighable quantity times the multiple. which equals 480 milligrams. Next, we can use that to find our diluent, which is lactose in this case. And in order to find our diluent, we just take our total and subtract the active drug or the codeine. And we'll get that we have 360 milligrams of lactose. Now all that's left is to find our aliquot. And that's pretty easy. You just go ahead and take your total and divide it by your multiple. So your aliquot is 120 milligrams. In this 120 milligrams, there will be exactly 30 milligrams of active drug. So what about volume? It's a similar process to weighing a substance, but let's go ahead and work through an example. You need to measure six milliliters of a drug, but you only have the graduated cylinder shown calibrated in 10 milliliter increments. What do you do? So I'm gonna show my work and help follow along. So we know that we have six milliliters of a drug and somehow we need to make six milliliters into a number that is divisible by 10 so that we're able to measure it out. I'm gonna go ahead and use a multiple of five for this situation because six times five equals 30. And that is an amount that can be measured by the graduated cylinder. So that's how much drug I'm going to use. And then I need to find a total. To do so, it needs to be a number that is divisible by our multiple, but is still in 10 milliliter increments. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use our total of 50 milliliters, which makes our diluent 20 milliliters. And all that's left to find is our aliquot. And the aliquot would be your total, 50, divided by your multiple, and that'll equal 10 milliliters. So in every 10 milliliters of your graduated cylinder, there will be exactly 6 milliliters of drug. So here are some practice problems available to you to give a try on volume and weight. Go ahead and pause the video here because the next slide will show the answers and give it a try. Here are the answers to questions one and two, and I've also included a link to some more practice problems that you can use for aliquot problems. I'll also have the link in my description. I hope you find this video helpful and it makes it a little easier to understand aliquot. Thank you guys for watching.